All right, guys, Holochains and NFTs. What is Holochain NFTs? Why will Holochain NFTs be better? That's what we're going to try to answer in this video because, well, let's be honest, NFTs is a boom this year. They're going to be even bigger next year, I think. And I am really definitely getting into NFTs right now. So I want to take a look at Holochain and NFTs after I came across this article that talked about NFTs being on Holochain. Before I get to that, though, let's talk a little bit about Ethereum. Now, Ethereum is basically the base camp where NFTs is the biggest right now. And I do see a lot of influencers starting their own projects, NFT projects, promising a lot of value in exchange for, let's say, three Ethereum. Like, I don't know, I think Gary V was one of them. And full respect for Gary V, but I just want to remind you the potential that an Ethereum token has. The potential for an Ethereum token, one token in the future, as predicted by the Winklevosses, is $80,000. So right now, it may seem that what you're giving them for their NFTs is three Ethereum, for example, or $9,000. But in future terms, that could potentially be 80K. So really think about that before buying into NFTs. Like I really think that three ETH for an NFT by a big influencer, regardless of who they are, is too much, but that's just me. All right, so that's enough of me ranting. Now, if you haven't done so yet, please be sure to do what I always tell you to do. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and then we can jump into the video. All right, so let's talk about this holochain and NFTs. Now, by now, you might have probably already heard of the term NFT or non-fungible token. If you don't know what they are, then you could probably just think of them as something that's unique. There are fungible tokens and there are non-fungible tokens. If you take a deck of playing cards, each card is unique. One is stronger than the other. One is more valuable than the other. So they are non-fungible in the terms of they have different values and they're unique. Nobody will trade you an ace for a jack. That's how it is. Fungible tokens are things that hold the same value. So you can basically think of it as the dollar bills in the world. They all have the same value and can be exchanged for one another. If you gave me a dollar bill and I gave you a dollar bill back, nothing has been changed. Now, another funny thing about non-fungible tokens that was mentioned in the article, which you can find in the pinned comment below, said something like, I love you. I love you is non-fungible because depending on the person that is saying it, the meaning and the value is completely different. Your wife or your girlfriend versus a stalker, the I love you is different. And obviously physical artworks are non-fungible. But what about digital work? That's kind of tricky because digital work can be replicated or duplicated. But NFTs solve that issue with a declaration on the blockchain, saying something like there's ever going to be X amount of these NFTs. And since the ledger keeps track of the life of the token, like who it was bought and sold by, then at any time, we know if you're the real owner by looking it up on the blockchain. No time in history has that ever been possible before. So what we have here in the article is the graph of NFTs on blockchain and holochain. So really what they have in common is the reliability supports non-fungibility, but on holochain, it also adds some extra features which aren't available in blockchain. That is low computing and storage costs, native storage of actual digital works and bound to real world agents and events. And we'll talk about each of those in this video. So let's get to that. Let's start off with computing and storage and why holochain NFTs are more efficient. Now we got to start off with blockchain. Blockchain was originally designed to fix the broken financial system. And that was the goal of Bitcoin. But the thing is, when Jim spends his Bitcoin in his wallet, we don't know if that Bitcoin came from Donald or whether it came from Duck. So for NFTs to happen, in came smart contracts, which makes it possible to really identify the asset and keep the NFTs distinct from one another as ownership was being transferred. Apparently here is where Holochain really shines with their principle of provenance, which says that every piece of data is associated with a source and no additional code or smart contract is needed to keep instances of data, i.e. NFTs, distinct from one another. So NFTs on Holochain just work. It's just a transfer protocol. The life of the token is naturally tracked, and you can really think of the analogy as DNA and your ancestors. There is an exact linkage of who your ancestors are based on your genetic code. And it's kind of the same here. On Ethereum, NFTs and the transfer of NFTs are a costly operation. You gotta pay gas, and gas on ETH 
is not cheap right now and i don't think it's gonna be cheap until eth 2.0 rolls out on top of that we have eip 1559 which was released which burns ethereum the gas that was paid for each transaction also the nodes on ethereum are required to keep transactional data for all of time so there is additional storage cost there so holochain nfts can store the actual digital artwork so what that means is i am currently studying about how nfts work in the ins and out on ethereum and it's interesting because when you're storing an nft on ethereum it's not actually stored on the blockchain because something like a video file or a photo can be too big to be stored on the blockchain so they're stored somewhere else off the blockchain and all an nft does is it just mints a token called an nft and it shows you that you own it and what it does it has a link of the video or the picture that you stored somewhere else off the blockchain so when you're on ethereum just know that your nft it's not stored on the blockchain it's stored somewhere else and if that somewhere else just suddenly disappears there goes your nft you can store that nft the file of it pretty much anywhere like on a website hosted by Amazon, but the safest way is through IPFS, which stands for Interplanetary File System, which basically means that we have different people hosting your file. So it's decentralized like the blockchain. We're not gonna get into much detail about that now, but a good analogy of that is think of BitTorrent if you ever used it. Multiple people host the same file and when you download it, the more seeders there are, the faster you get to download. Now, Holochain is a little bit different because files can be stored on one's own personal ledger, which is called the source chain. And that's a major difference compared to blockchain where files cannot be stored. And one additional feature on Holochain with NFTs is that someone can make their NFTs public or private for everyone to see or for no one to see but only yourself and that is not a feature on the blockchain because on the blockchain what you basically have is a link and pretty much everybody can access that link and if your nft is transferred then it is actually transfers that means that you can no longer access that nft so if you have a bunch of dirty videos or magazines on an nft and you transferred it to your brother and he put it private you can no longer see your stash anymore and that's gonna be a sad day for you but a great day for him now let's talk about real world assets and properties as nfts blockchain is focused on anonymity and it has no central authority whereas holochain is optimized for accountability the creation of the nft is signed by the private key of the creator so you know who made it and you can kind of do the same for blockchain erc721 blockchain nfts but because everybody is keeping their private keys a secret there is no way to know who in real life painted that painting that is an nft but it is different on holochain because holochain has identity protocol that can really identify the person and that is more government friendly. And how I see it is that if it is on Holochain, then what you get is automatic KYC or know your customer. So if Coinbase was built on Holochain, then it won't have the need anymore to ask new users or you to take a picture of your driver's license front and back, which is an annoying thing to do. And just know that this verification process of verifying who you are, KYC, costs billions of dollars for companies. And just because of this unique feature, Holochain NFTs are better for representing all kinds of property like land, homes, vehicles, whatever you can think of. So basically it looks like verification, which needs to be done in some instances, say like when you're selling your property, your real estate, cannot be done on the blockchain, but it can be done on Holochain. So what I think is that there is big value in having KYC built into Holochain so that real world assets like boats, like houses, can be represented as NFTs on Holochain. And we can know through Holochain identity protocols who owns what. That's not really possible on Ethereum. And in addition to that, NFTs can be kept public or private, which is another feature that is not possible on Ethereum. So when we have influencers that are saying, you should buy my NFTs for three Ethereum, like I mentioned at the start of this video, really think about the value, the future value of their project. Because right now, Ethereum has major scaling problems. It has gas problems. And when they're selling their NFTs, they're not paying for that but you are. And knowing that the future projection as per the Winklevosses of one Ethereum token, because Ethereum is seen as digital gas or digital oil is 
$80,000. So if you have one Ethereum token and you're giving that away and 10 years later it turns into 80K, are you going to be happy about that? So we really have to ask ourselves that question. So when you're buying an NFT of an influencer, you really got to look at their plans, their roadmap in order to figure out the future value of this NFT rather than just kind of shoot in the dark about what you think this NFT's value is going to be because it has to be more than 80K for its future value to be worth more than the ETH that you're paying now. That's what I think. But anyways, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, that's all I got for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then please be sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, check out these other videos on cryptocurrencies and passive income, and I'll see you next time. Peace!